Welcome to our new series, Countdown to 2020. Our first episode is Rent-A-Bike. As the Olympics approach, bicycle transit is getting a lot of buzz. Let's check out how new bicycle services are giving users a unique view of Tokyo. Hi, I'm Chris Butler. Welcome to Tokyo Eye 2020, a show that tells you everything you want to know about the city that will host the 2020 Olympics. In our new series, Countdown to 2020, we will be seeing how Tokyo is getting ready to host the 2020 Olympics. Our first entry is Rental Bike with the reporter Winnie. Well, I think it's the first time that we ever had a bicycle in the studio. <laughs> yeah, you know, so this is it. This mm -hmm. is the community rental bike. And, you know, usually if you rent like a bike, you'll have to return it to wherever you borrow mm -hmm. it. Right. But with this bike, you know, you can pretty much borrow and return it at any any ports within the area. I see. Okay, so you don't have to return it to where you borrowed it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's very, very convenient. Yeah, it is. And, you know, the more amazing thing is that it's mm -hmm. not just for local citizens. Foreign mm -hmm. visitors can use them as well. Right. And, you know, bikes are eco-friendly. And since, you know, um, it's going to get so crowded mm -hmm. during the 2020 Olympics, right. I think the Japanese government is actually trying to, you know, promote like a broader use of these bikes mm, I see. as one of the solutions to the, right. like, traffic congestion. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, you know, this time I also got a chance to really cycle around Tokyo on this bike. Hi everyone, my name is Winnie. Um, I'm not much of a cyclist, but today this bike is really easy to ride and we're gonna explore a lot of cool places in Tokyo with this bike. So let's go. Winnie is in Odaiba in the area around Tokyo Bay. From here, she'll head to Nihonbashi, then circle the Imperial Palace and finish in Shinjuku, all on a rent-a-bike. The ride will give her, and us, a look at some of the city's best sites, shops, and attractions. I don't think we can ever expect to see this in city center, you know? It's just so amazing, and I can even just feel the breeze on my face. So beautiful and so relaxing. Winnie is renting a so-called community bicycle. In the past, the various wards of Tokyo had independent community bike plans, but in recent years, they've teamed up, making the service much more convenient. This map shows ports where you can pick up and drop off rent-a-bikes. There are around 250 scattered across six wards. You can now return your community bike at any port within the area covered by the plan, even across wards. Pick up in Akihabara and return in Ropongi? No problem. Registration via PC or smartphone is required to use community bikes. Just visit the website and enter your information along with a credit card. It's easy for tourists to sign up too. After Winnie finishes the online sign up, she heads to the bike port to start her ride. Bikes available for use are listed by number on the website. Select the bike you'd like to use. You are then sent a passcode. Enter the passcode on the panel, and the bike lock will be released. Your ride has begun. You know, this bike is really comfortable to ride, even for just beginners. And because you don't have to bend over, you can just have a great view of just everything around you. It's really nice. The bikes are equipped with batteries for an extra boost of motorized power when climbing hills. Tokyo is full of ups and downs, but with this feature, you don't have to worry about steep hills. The Tokyo Bay Area is an expansive district of Tokyo dotted with major shopping malls and numerous attractions that draw both kids and adults. Winnie drops by one of these attractions, which is a three-minute walk from Tokyo Teleport Station.
This showroom is run by one of Japan's major heavy equipment manufacturers. It shows off Japan's cutting edge robotics technology. From cars to electronics to medicine to food, robots are coming to play an ever increasing role in many industries. Here, one can get a glimpse of the future of robotics. Okay. Winnie poses for what Smile. seems like a photo. But then, a robot takes hold of a pen and starts to draw. This robot is an artist. The contours and shading of your face are taken from the photo and turned into data that drives the robot. Okay, now I see my eyes coming out. <laughs> This is amazing, you see that? Like, you know, just the stroke and how it's like drawing my face. It's finished in just a few minutes. Wow, look at this. This is amazing. Does it look like me? And I feel like it's just the best souvenir you can get. It's just Japanese technology, you know, it's just so cool. After Odaiba, Winnie's next stop is the Nihonbashi area on the east side of Tokyo Station. Architecture, but I'm not sure how old this is. It's like a sushi place. It's really cool. And it's definitely something that you can't see when you're just, you know, driving on the big streets or transporting on the train. Nihonbashi retains the atmosphere of old Japan. Winnie pedals to a shop that embodies that atmosphere. The shop is a three-minute walk from Ningyocho Station. It's a boutique full of Japanese arts and crafts. From adorable Japanese dolls, to comical masks, to pouches and bags printed with classic patterns of old Tokyo, this is a great spot for souvenir shopping. Ningyo, Tsukaido. The bottle holder is lined with insulation to keep your beverage at the appropriate temperature for the season. And it has an eye-catching design. This may look like an ordinary umbrella, but when it gets wet, a cherry blossom design appears. See, now I can even wait for rainy days. Next, Winnie heads to the route around the Imperial Palace. what Tokyo is about, you know, like having both sides of the world at one place to see. It's just really amazing. Next, Winnie moves west to the busy district of Shinjuku. Shinjuku, home to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, is filled with skyscrapers that soar more than 200 meters above street level.
future of entertainment. Really exciting. And I feel like I'm just in this cool movie. Winnie searches for a port to return her bicycle. The closest ports to your location can be easily located with GPS. Once you park and lock the bike, simply press the enter key and you're done. Winnie decides to stroll around Shinjuku after returning her bicycle. In recent years, Shinjuku's Kabukicho district has seen new facilities like cineplexes, hotels, and restaurants popping up like mushrooms, drawing more foreign visitors. Winnie heads to a building in Kabukicho that's an eight-minute walk from Shinjuku Station. And it just looks like a, like a regular office building, but somehow there's a shrine in here. Okay. Okay, let's see what's in here. Winnie finds her way down the mysterious hallway and enters a room where she meets... A ninja. This is a ninja-themed attraction. Here, you can try a number of secret tricks developed by the ninja during the time of the samurai. Japanese word is ninja. This hanging scroll hides concealed ninja weapons. Umbrella. Umbrella, yeah. Yeah, I would never imagine you can hide like a weapon in an umbrella. Next, the quintessential ninja weapon, the shuriken. Here you can live the dream of every ninja-obsessed child and give these shuriken a throw. Winnie gives it a try. It's really difficult. I don't think I can be a ninja. You have to have that strength and you have to look like right at, you just have to aim it really closely. But yeah, it's difficult to be a ninja, I guess. So is this very easy to ride, this bike? Yeah, it is. It's just, you know, very, very handy. Mm -hmm. Now, um, tell us about the route that you took. It was, you know, a little less than 20 kilometers and mm -hmm. it took around like, I would say three hours. But you know, since there were a lot of um, the, the ports around the mm -hmm. stations and around the tourist sites really gave me like a lot of freedom to adjust my bike tour according right. to, you know, my schedule and how I was feeling, you know. Mm, I see. Um, how much do these uh, bikes cost? So actually for the very first half an hour, mm -hmm. it costs 150 yen, uh -huh. but afterwards it's just 100 yen every 30 minutes. Really? Yeah, so you know, even if you spend the whole day on this bike, mm. it's just gonna take, cost you maximum um, 1,500 yen. Really? Yeah, so you know, it's very reasonable price, Absolutely, very, very reasonable. Now of course, um, you're riding with cars, you're actually, uh, uh, riding on the streets, um, so naturally you have to uh, watch out for traffic, uh, follow uh, safety rules and everything, but um, where should you ride a bicycle on the street? Yeah, so I think the main rule mm -hmm. is to make sure that you ride on the left side of the roadway. Right. And you know, with some specific signs, bikes are also allowed on mm -hmm. some like sidewalks, uh -huh. but it's just very important to pay attention to the pedestrians, yeah. Mm. Now, I understand that the, uh, the Tokyo government, uh, the city itself, is trying to take advantage of the convenience of uh, rental bikes uh, leading up to the 2020 Olympics. And uh, that way, you know, tourists, when they come to Japan, uh, I guess they will be able to enjoy the Olympic experience even further, uh, make it more of a satisfying uh, experience. 
So we can see that Vuena bikes add a whole new dimension to Tokyo sightseeing. Now, Michael is going to check out some very, very unique Vuena bike services. This is Yanaka, a popular part of Tokyo's old fashioned Shitamachi area. Okay, so here I am in one of the busiest areas of Yanaka. Lots of shops, lots of people here. Uh, mostly uh, tourists come to this area. I hear there's a good place to rent bicycles in this area, so let's go check it out. Michael drops by a local bike rental shop located in a renovated liquor store. It's an eight minute walk from Nippori Station. Hello. Hello. I'd like to rent a bicycle. Okay, do you have a reservation today? No, I don't. Okay, well, let's see. So... It's recommended you reserve the type of bike you want for the day on the shop's website. But if available, you can also rent one on the spot. After signing the rental contract, you simply complete the paperwork and show your ID. They also provide a guide map to the Yanaka area and point out the main points of interest. But you are free to ride anywhere you'd like. Oh, wow, there's so many cute bikes here. Michael receives his key and sets off to grab his oh, rent-a-bike. There's a lineup of stylish and colorful bikes to choose from. Can you tell me about this bicycle? What's not, not a mountain bike? What was this made for? This bike was designed with small tires to allow for smoother acceleration from a stop. With Tokyo's many traffic lights and hills, these small tires make a big difference. Okay, I'm ready to cruise around Yanaka. One thing about this bike is it's really easy to ride. Stopping and going on a bike with these kinds of tires it is a lot easier than the other bikes I've ridden in the past. Uh, you could just ride this all day without getting tired. As I'm riding along, the uh, flower petals keep on raining down and uh, fluttering with the wind. This is just absolutely precious. Wow. A rent-a-bike is a convenient way to get around, but many visitors to Tokyo are nervous about navigating the giant city. Michael drops by a shop that offers a service tailor-made for the directionally challenged. It's located a 15-minute walk from Asakusa Station. It's a former restaurant converted into a space that offers unique cycling tours of Tokyo. They offer a variety of guided tours, including one of Tokyo's rivers and bridges, and another focused on handicrafts, with stops at workshops where you can flex your creativity. Guides Igarashi and Eguchi know the streets of Tokyo well, and can give tours in English and Chinese. Michael signs up for the Tokyo Illumination Ride, a full six hours that includes both famous and little-known views of city lights. The tour fee includes a bicycle, helmet, and insurance. Hi, please follow me. Yep, go. Scroll down, stop. The guides provide commentary and directions through an earpiece designed to let in the surrounding noise for safety. The tour includes both Tokyo's old-fashioned areas and gleaming skyscrapers. 
back alleys and boulevards. The various sights of Japan's capital flow by as you pedal. As dusk falls, lights begin to come on across the city. After the sun sets completely, the tour arrives at its first City Lights hotspot. This is Odaiba Marine Park. It offers a great view across Tokyo Bay to glittering clusters of high-rises, as well as Rainbow Bridge. Daiba is a three little kind of man-made item. Yeah, okay. Built in 1850s. 1850s? Yeah. Oh, that long so, ago? Yeah. I've yeah. been to Odaiba before, but I actually have never been here at night before. Great. Yeah, this is really Great. something. Great. Wow. Now on to the next viewing spot. This park is quieter than the last one, but it has prime views of planes coming and going from Haneda Airport and of Tokyo Gate Bridge. The tour left Asakusa about three hours ago. Michael and his guides take a rest and the guides prepare a fresh pot of coffee. It smells, it smells great. Yeah. yeah. Nice, fresh, freshly nice. ground beans. Oh, wow. Cheers. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, it's a perfect way to spend the rest of the later part of the day, coming to a park where no one's around and enjoying a hot cup of coffee. Perfect. Rest time is over. On to the next spot. Oh, this view is awesome. Yeah. Absolutely great. The final stop on the tour is this great little-known spot with its unobstructed panoramic views of the city. What's that over there, that diamond shape? Diamond shape is uh, Harumi Futo. Harumi, Harumi Pier. Harumi Pier, yeah, yeah. oh, okay. I've never had a chance to go around Tokyo by bicycle. Um, I always thought walking was a good way, but man, this is even better. Being able to travel to so many different spots in one, in one afternoon, which is really the best way to get around Tokyo. Okay, here we are in Tokyo, at one of the many parks that they have to offer. Around me, you can see lots of vegetation, lots of greenery. Let's take a closer look inside. This park in Adachi Ward on the north side of Tokyo has paddies, fields, and flower beds with something in bloom year round. It blends farm and wilderness to offer a respite from urban life. It's accessible by bus from Nishiarai Station. The park also has important historical buildings, like this traditional farmhouse built almost three centuries ago. The hearth, raised wood floors, and earth-floored kitchen with traditional rice stove show how people lived here about 300 years ago. Wow, this house has been kept in its original form, everything as it was. Beautiful, it's so cozy in here, it's a place I'd love to live in. This park has its own rent-a-bike service too. Show your ID and complete the forms and you'll be riding in no time. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna be using. It's a classic bike. We call this a mama chali, which is actually a bicycle for moms. Uh, it's very easy to, to ride and get on. It has a nice basket in the front and a rack in the back. It's got everything you need. Let's get to going. Wow, this is really a unique way to make your way around Tokyo. You just kind of cruise along at your own pace and uh, look at this beautiful skyline in the background. Having this type of clean road with no potholes in it, it's a nicely paved road uh, that you can uh, 
just cruise along and enjoy a nice, beautiful day uh, along Arakawa River. So paths along the river are usually closed off to cars. So that, that would make it ideal for uh, biking. Yeah, it's really nice. One thing about Tokyo I appreciate is that uh, a lot of the rivers, they've mm -hmm. got these parkways where only bicycles or joggers can use. And I uh, actually saw a lot of uh, elderly folks as mm -hmm. well out there getting their daily exercise, getting some fresh air. Uh, and I had a nice time riding down it. It really seemed like the parkway just went on forever. Mm -hmm. um, so just cruise along for a couple of hours and uh, right. yeah. yeah. So it um, seems like you know biking would be great, especially on a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. But uh, you took the night tour. Yes. Yeah. That How was night, that? Oh my gosh, that that night tour was amazing. Going with those two guys right. in the night tour, um, you know, we we broke a sweat. We got a little mm -hmm. adrenaline going as we were cruising along, mm. and it actually felt like I was experiencing Tokyo for the first time again. And I've really? been here for ten years, yeah. but. It was a completely new way to experience mm, it. So mm. for someone coming from outside of the country, right. it's a great way to experience it. But even for those who've been here, mm -hmm. expats that have been in Japan for a long time, it's a great way to experience Tokyo right, again. Right, right. Now, are there other types of uh, bike tours? Yeah, there are many. Actually, if you, if you go online mm -hmm. and you kind of look it up, uh, bike tours in Tokyo, um, there's actually many different companies that do it. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, they, they'll fit to your needs. So mm -hmm. for example, if you're not much of a cycler and you, mm. it's your first time, then they, they've, they've got tours that are good for beginners. And if you really like to cruise around at a high, pa a high pace, they mm -hmm. have those tours as well. So really, uh, there's many that you can check out that will fit your needs. I see. Okay, let's review the places we visited today. The shop where you can rent stylish bicycles is near Nippori Station. The place that offers guided bike tours is near Asakusa Station. And the park where you can also rent a bike is reached by bus from Nishi Arai Station. Now, if you need more information on the places we visited today, check out the Tokyo Eye 2020 website. Well, thanks a lot, Michael. It was a Thank pleasure you. having you. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Tokyo Eye 2020.